welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Paula with Blooming Apaches and for today's video I am going to show you how to strategically place yourself next year in a place of victory through the power of prophecy, declarations, and just a little bit of a teaching on how to prophesy or on how to receive prophecies and how to do all of these things. So um, if you are a Catholic viewer, this topic might might be a little um, different from what you might normally hear like at church or something like that, or even in Bible studies. We just don't have that much training in the Catholic Church for the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how to apply them to our lives every day. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about these things and I've learned a lot of this from our Protestant brothers and sisters and also from like Encounter School of Ministry. I've never attended the School of Ministry, but I have received so much wisdom from some of the books that they put out. This is personally like placed me in breakthroughs of a lot of things in my life. But because I've started partnering with God in God's will, in God's alignment, and part of that is learning how to hear God's will for your life. So how are we supposed to know where to go, what to do with our life if we don't, if we're not hearing from God? Um, and honestly, for me, it's like my, it is my joy to help people hear the voice of God and train them to uh, build their gift, build the church up. And so thanks for watching and make sure to watch until the end because I am going to release an impartation of the prophetic gift. So uh, I'll explain what that is later on in this video. So let me get started. So what is a decree and what is a declaration? First of all, um, decrees and declarations are really important. Um, for me personally, I think about them as prayers, like kind of like writing my own prayers. Um, <clears throat> but let's get a little bit more technical here. A de to declare means to make known formally, explicitly, or officially. So like writing it on paper, or a law, think about like legal terms. And then a decree is a formal and authoritative order. So um, especially one of having the force of law. So um, the Bible is full of decrees and their effectiveness and, and how useful they are to God's people. So for example, in Psalm 2, 7, it says that I will declare the decree. And then in Job 22, 28, it says, you will also decree a thing and it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways. In Daniel 4:17. It says about the watchmen, this decision is by decree of the watchers. Queen Esther uh, formed decrees as well. So there's a lot of examples in the Bible about decreeing and declaring. Now, very often we th it, get, it gets kind of a, a bad connotation because with prosperity gospel preachers and like they've taken it too far out of context. But biblically, like if you create your own prayers or declarations, you can have a very effective breakthrough in your prayer life. And that's something that was huge for me in my life. And I, I try to teach and tell people about, you know, declare your word for next year. We're in that season of December where we're starting to think about the new year, the new season. I've been picking words for myself in the last two or three years and my words this year was wisdom and light and you guys like that word was huge I started this YouTube channel I began to I was called into prophecy as a prophet to the nation so man the 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 wisdom and the light light is revelation um, that really like put me in a new level the year before that um, my I believe my word was joy and really, um, I encountered a lot of suffering and pain and trial in that year. But because um, I came to know what the joy of the Lord really was, you know, the Bible verse, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord strengthened me with his joy. And it was the glory of God that allowed me to get through some of those dark and painful seasons. Um, 
So I, I believe in the, in the power of decree, decreeing and declaring God's word over your life. Um, let's look at some examples in the Bible. First of all, Jesus. Jesus always like, I mean, he was full of power. And so very often you'll see like the examples of Jesus doing healing and deliverance in the Bible. You'll see him saying things like, young man, I say to you, rise. And then he'll say like, woman, thou art loosed. And then he'll say, peace, be still, you know, and then rise, take up, take up your bed and walk. Those are the kind of authoritative statements that Jesus and even the disciples used to, to demonstrate the supernatural, to demonstrate the authority of the word of God, the power that resides in the in, in our tongue. It says in Proverbs 18, 21, it says that the power of life and death are in the tongue. So de decreeing and declarations, it takes knowing, first of all, what God's word says. So that takes um, understanding what the word says, but also receiving prophetic information and that comes through prayer. And then it takes power, which we have because as children of God, children of the light, we have received through baptism of uh, the Holy Spirit. And then third, it also takes faith. Like everything, it takes faith to walk into the declarations that God has laid out for us. Do we believe, you know, do we even receiving a prophetic word, you have to, you have to have faith to receive it. So I can't tell you enough how much that component of faith take part in this decreeing and declaring and prophesying. Okay, so I've explained a little bit about decreeing and declaration, but now what is exactly, like how do you do it? How do you decree a thing? Well, we just look at the Bible um, for examples of that and really all it is, you know, is Catholics especially, um, Catholics are really good at reading prayers, you know, we've got little prayer cards for everything. <laughs> But here's the thing, that those prayers were made by somebody else. And while they do carry an anointing and, and, and truth, and they're beautiful, there is so much power in actually writing your own prayers. And that's what I call a declaration. Writing your own prayers that are aligned with the Word of God and God's will for your life, tailor-made, personalized, customized just for you, what God wants to say to you and that's so much more powerful and we and I believe that the power of mental prayer um, needs to be exercised we have to be trained in this activation we have to activate this into our lives so that we may be in the offense and not in the defense of a spiritual warfare like we tend to do okay so how do you prophesy okay um, it kind of sounds like a big antiquated word, but prophecy really is just being the voice box of what God is saying. And the Bible in the New Testament says that my sheep hear my voice, okay? My sheep hear my voice and and my, my sheep hear me. Okay, so we've got voices going on in our heads all the time. We've got our flesh talking to us. We've got um, the enemy talking to us. We've got our addictions or strongholds talking to us. And so how do you filter through all of that and hear God's voice? His voice is very distinct. It is a whisper. And there are a few activations that I can, um, I can share with you. Um, for example, if you're a mother or a father, have you ever picked out a name for a baby? Picking out a name for a baby is such a great activation because it's it's like you're 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 coming into the tuning of that radio frequency of the Holy Spirit. And because God has already called you by name, right? It says in the Bible that I have called you by name, like I knew you before I formed you in the womb. And so there's a name out there that God already ordained and he speaks through the parents the father who is the priest, the mother as well, and he speaks to the parents to name that child. And so if you've ever gone through that process of picking out a baby, it takes discernment, you know, it takes a it takes a discernment. I always love to hear how people come to figure out their baby's name. And and really that's what this is all about. That's prophecy. That's exercising the gift of prophecy. 
Um, so what about uh, if you haven't had that experience, maybe you've gone through confirmation and usually in, in the sacrament of confirmation, you pick out a saint. So how did you pick out your saint? You know, it's that same thing. It's that figuring out like who speaks to me? You know, what is that person? What is that saint that I relate with that speaks to my heart? It's the same as spiritual direction. You know, finding a spiritual director can be really, really hard. It's like dating, you know. Whose voice can I hear, you know? And God uses different people to speak to us and through them. And so it's kind of like that. It's it's kind of like, dis it's just discernment. It's discernment of God's voice. And eventually as your spiritual uh, senses mature, you will begin to like be more readily aware of God's voice in your life. So I believe that God wants to speak a new word a fresh word into the new year for my life for example and I believe he wants to do that to for you too and this is a great time to pick a word for your next year and so I want to encourage you in that and so in this video now I'm gonna give you nine activations so that you can prophesy to yourself and as you begin to prophesy to yourself you will become uh, you, you will start to discover this gift and, and just be in love with God's revelation, which is God's word. Um, and then also helping build the church, build the kingdom, because that's the end goal of prophecy. It's to build the church. Okay, so activation number one, ask God. Ask the Holy Spirit. And the way that I like to ask God is by putting a demand on the Holy Spirit. And that sounds kind of like putting a demand. How do you... You know, you're trying to control God or something? Well, no, but simply we quote scripture to activate God's promises. So for example, I like to say, Father, you say that your sheep hear your voice. And Father, I partner with that word, Lord. I believe that I can hear your voice. And so when I pray in that form, it not only activates that promise, that scripture, but it helps me believe because faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. And so it actually helps me, but I like to pray in that way because I know when I pray the, the words of God himself, that God is a good father and he's going to, he's going to deliver uh, an answer for me. And, and it works every time for me. I love it. I love it. God is so good. And some of you, this is all you have to hear. This is all you have to hear to activate your prophecy, the gift of prophecy, if you have it. Um, and, and that's awesome. You don't even need to hear the rest of it. But I do encourage you because there's so many ways. Some people go through desolation, the desolations of the heart. Well, God says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And living water means it's constantly running and so sometimes you have to go into the rest of these activations to kind of start fanning the flame and stirring up the spirit so that we can uh, hear from God because God wants us to search him out you know the Bible says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and it is the glory of kings like you and me to search that matter out and so I believe that there is such glory that comes upon us when we search for God's truth and revelation for our lives. Okay, so activation number two. Acti activation number two is about hearing God through other people. God speaks through other people because God is inside of us and each one of us. And so if I go to church and I, if I hear a sermon or if I and part of a Bible study, or if I'm in a retreat, um, I like to ask God, what is my word for this weekend? Like if I'm a part of a retreat, I will ask God, I was taught by my spiritual director to say, you know, look for God's word in that. What, it, what was the word that you kept hearing? You know, what speaks to you? What is it that God, you that you feel that God is saying to you through this retreat, event, Bible study, whatever? Okay, so look for repetition of words, look for patterns. There was a season in my life that I began to receive clothes and it was funny, like the color of the clothes that I was receiving out of nowhere, like no celebration, nothing. And, but what the Lord was saying to me in that season was I am clothing you with, with, uh, with virtue, with revelation even. And so that was, that was a really awesome thing that I noticed whenever, um, 
whenever like on my birthday and I celebrate with friends and start receiving gifts one of the activations I like to do is like okay what's the pattern in all of the gifts that I received and that was also really really cool where God started to speak to me in one year about transformation and that was exactly what was happening um so that's really cool you know that was really awesome um so look for patterns look for uh, repetition in words things that you're hearing through sermons people friends you know that's the kind of thing where god is speaking to you through other i believe god's speaking to you all the time we're just not aware you know we're not training our senses to hear his voice and so that's what these activations are going to help you do okay so number three is dream god's dreams so dreams are one of the first things that i began to realize that i had the gift of prophecy and let me tell you what the Bible first says before you like click out and think I'm crazy or think this is crazy. In the book of Job 33, 14 through 18, it says that uh, dreams are visions of the night. It's a vision of the night. It is, it is the one time in the night when the Lord can speak to you and, and, and use your mind, use your imagination freely. And so what it says there in, in verse 15, it says, um, when deep sleep falls upon men as they slumber in their beds, he opens their ears. So he's activating your ears to hear him and he will terrify them with warnings. So he, he, he uses dreams sometimes to warn us. And then he says to turn a man from wrongdoing and keep him from pride. So he, the Lord preserves our life our virtues um, keep us from doing what's wrong so sometimes we, we're really quick to dismiss our dreams as you know oh that was from the devil or oh you know that was that I don't know if that was from God uh, but then it says that it preserves our soul from hell from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword that was like one of the things that i had from a very very young age i've always been interested in like dream interpretation but you know there's a lot of really kooky things out there you got to be really careful with like new age stuff witchcraft all of that kind of stuff if it if the source is not biblical scriptural like from god it's really open to a lot of error and false prophecy and and maybe not even so much error, but it's an open door for the demonic. I was full of those when I was young because I was searching for an answer to what I was dreaming um, because I knew they carried weight. They were, I had, when I was little, I would dream things that were like really, um, just really impressionable on me. And even now I have a very active dream life. I keep, I keep a dream journal. And the Bible actually says in Habakkuk 2, chapter verse 2, it says, uh, the Lord is instructing uh, the prophet to write down the vision that he's having. And so this is a way that we honor the revelation of God. Even if I think it's like the dumbest dream ever, sometimes we, we need to take it to the Lord and say like, God, where were you in this dream? Not everything is from the Holy Spirit. And a lot of it comes, you know, a lot, if, if our lifestyle is watching, you know, horror movies and whatever is going into my mind, into my eyes, into my ears, if it's not godly, um, it, it actually kind of like muddies the, the, the filters through which I can hear the voice of God. And so a lot of that can be tainted by the enemy. Um, through the open doors that we have in our lives. So I always seek biblical interpretation and I always ask the Holy Spirit. Dreams are full of symbology. I love dreams because it's usually like a storyline. It's, it's awesome, but it's very open to interpretation and full of symbols that can often be like misunderstood or even overlooked. And so one of the things that I've learned to pay attention to in dreams, and I can do a whole other video on this, but look for the names in the in the dream. Like there's certain people with names. Sometimes you dream people not really, they don't have anything to do with the dream. It's the name that they have that the Lord wants to speak through. And so look for the meaning of the name behind the people you see in the dreams. And then also um, pay attention to colors street signs, numbers, buildings, houses. 
always always look at write it down write as much detail as you can and you'll be surprised at what God is speaking to you after you wake up and have some Holy Spirit time um, and you seek the Lord's interpretation so maybe you're having a hard time remembering your dreams uh, what happens is that when we dream you know every, I think a lot of people dream most people dream they just don't remember that what they're dreaming and so a way to do that is by first thing in the morning the first thing I do is I open up my notebook and I write down whatever vision if I wake up in the middle of the night um, I write down the time that I woke up because sometimes it's like 333 or you know 444 <laughs> and all of that even carries um, carries meaning that God is speaking in a specific context to you at that time and so I've, I've developed this habit and the more that I write down the little bits that I remember the more um, I begin to remember in the next you know as the time goes by so if I had not personally if I had not written down all of my dreams like starting from like a year and a half ago I would not have known that I was a prophet to the nations so I had a lot of dreams that I didn't know what they meant I would just write them down but as I grew in the prophetic and understanding certain themes in, in interpretation I began to realize that things were actually starting to come to pass like for example one time I had a dream that I was a refugee in Chicago and and I didn't think anything of it. it but it was a very like the weight of that dream was burdensome and so I wrote it down and I don't know like six months later when I'm sitting down writing my thesis for the for the school of apostles and prophets um, I start to research you know immigrants in Chicago and holy moly we start I start reading articles about how all the immigrants and the refugees that are coming into Chicago um, as we started seeing and so the Lord um, in that dream he spoke to me about the immigrants and how to pray in intercession for them it was awesome it was glory filled but again I would have never I would have missed that you know I would have missed it completely I would have missed God's purpose for for my for my life you know and so anyway I just encourage you to write write it down I personally as a resource I like to uh, listen to some of the talks by Dr. Barbary Breathitt um, I think she's wonderful in explaining dreams symbology she has some really good books and and cheat sheets that you can reference you know colors what do they mean look from a biblical perspective and you'll be surprised at what all God is speaking to you okay so number four number four is awesome I do this one every day number four is activation through the rosary and one of the things that is often overlooked about Our Lady the Blessed Virgin Mary my mother is that she is titled Queen of Prophets so she is the queen of prophets and she will obtain so many graces for you um when i do the rosary i never i never not receive a, a piece of revelation because our lady is interested in um the nations she is the mother of the church she is the she is holy mother and she is constantly interceding for us to her son Jesus and so I've received so many breakthroughs if you've never done a Marian consecration I really encourage you to do that because it just gave me so much breakthrough in my life that it was awesome and holy and only brought me closer to Jesus so number five now is go to adoration come to the heavenly table in the mass in the Eucharistic uh, Adoration Chapel. Why? Because meditation is key. When you're trying to listen to the voice of God, um, prayer is like talking to God, but meditation is listening to God. And a lot of people get burned out because they think they don't hear anything. They just don't know how to ask the right questions. So a lot of uh, what I do when I meditate um, on the Lord is I ask good questions. For example, like, the story of Hannah. Hannah 
was obsessed with getting a baby, right? She wanted to get pregnant because the pressures of society at the time, but God would not answer her the way that she wanted until she she got to this like rock bottom moment. She looked drunk from so much crying. She looked crazy from how much desperation she had. Um, that what she that this is when Hannah started bargaining with the Lord and she finally like got it right. She said, God, I will offer you my firstborn. He's yours. I just want to have a child and I will give him to you. And so we have the amazing prophet Samuel that we see in the book of Samuel. So, you know, it was about asking the right questions that that she finally tapped in to God's will, what God actually wanted from her. But she had to spend that time. I don't know how how long she must have been in that chapel praying to God to hear her prayer. Um, and sometimes that's what it takes. We have to pray until something happens. Push. That's a cute little acronym. Pray until something happens. Another thing I like to do is keep a journal with the questions that I ask the Lord. I ask the Lord a question and then I just listen. You know, I just sit there and listen and I, uh, I start receiving visions. You know, I'll receive a, a, an image or a full on vision, you know, like a 3D picture, moving video type vision of, of what God, whatever God wants to show me in that time. Um, but think about it like a phone call when you sit in adoration. I like, first of all, the setting of adoration is awesome because you're not being bothered by anybody. Well, most of the time you're not being bothered by people. It's quiet and hello, like you're in the presence of God. Like God is literally shining glory and revelation on your face. And the level of protection of the type of visions and, and, and prophecy that you receive during that time is really pure. Um, what, what the other thing I will say about meditation, think about it kind of like a phone call when you, when you dial the number, that's like your prayer. And then when you put your phone up here, you know, you're listening, you know that they're going to answer, or at least you'll get a voicemail, but, but you know, they're going to answer. And so it's that kind of expectant faith that God will answer your prayer. I remember the first time that I received a word of knowledge that was like, wow you know i could not believe but then after that first time i began to i began to just expect it you know today i pray the rosary i expect revelation i uh pray and ask questions i i receive every time and when i don't receive i change my question you know and so then i start you know it's just it's about the details it's about um building a prophecy, you know, building a revelation that you can, you know, it's one thing to receive revelation. Anybody can, you know, receive revelation. It's, it's about converting that revelation into a prophecy. Like where is, where's God's will in this? Because that's all we do is we're declaring God's will for God's people and whatever he wants to speak. And so we have to be aligned with that because when you pray in God's will, you're in God's protection and you're in God's authority. And when you're in God's authority, you are so powerful. Your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are heard. Things start to happen. The spirit, the spirit begins to shift things in your favor and, and you start to build in God's kingdom. So adoration, um, I love going to, 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 I love going to adoration because it's like being in the presence of God and having the lights on, you know, it's like, okay, I read the Bible and then like, you can't read it without turning the lights on, right? It's kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but it's beautiful. Go to adoration. Number six, come into the spirit of prophecy. What is the spirit of prophecy you're asking? Probably the spirit of prophecy is an atmosphere. It is a worship filled atmosphere where so much can happen within that atmosphere that's stirred up. It's like a fanning of the flame. Um, very often, like at my church, and I know most churches offer nights of praise and worship, and they're so powerful, especially when they have the Eucharist um, exposed, because it's in this setting that you can experience crazy revelation breakthroughs. We just don't know what, what's happening. And so whenever, like I'm a worship leader at my church, and so whenever we praise and worship, there comes a point in the worship service that the Lord tells me it's time. 
now. Now a breakthrough can happen. Now healing can happen. And so when whenever that happens, um, I know I can go up to somebody and say, I want to pray for you right now. I feel like the Lord wants to do a healing work in you. And I can prophesy over people in a new way because it's so easy. When, when the spirit is stirred, when the atmosphere is created, this is facilitated. Um, you can get deliverance. You can get healing. So many things. So many awesome, awesome things. I want to point out in the Bible, Psalm 100, verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. And what I love to hang on to that word and be reminded because if I don't come into the spirit of prophecy with, with thanksgiving and especially with praise, I can't even enter the courts of heaven. You know and I want to be in that courts of heaven because I need to decree things you know I need to declare things and so if I'm not in Thanksgiving and if I'm a negative Nancy if I am completely blocked I cannot hear I cannot I can't I can't do anything and so this is the spirit of prophecy you know it's something that is created through praise and worship and creation of an atmosphere um, another thing that you can do when you're in the spirit of prophecy is to come into the company of the prophet so find a prophetic community find a prophetic friend you can find me um, and you'll notice in the Bible a very particular incident in 1st Samuel chapter 10 verse 10 when Saul was appointed uh, king by Samuel he went it says that he went into the company of the prophets and Saul began to prophesy why because the prophets were creating a spirit of prophecy they had an atmosphere they were praising and worshiping and all of a sudden you see Saul who doesn't have a prophetic gift he's a king you know he's destined to be a king but that's what it means that when we come into other into the umbrella of other prophets it's like it's so contagious it's a spirit of prophecy it is contagious and um, I know for, for a fact that like when I'm around other prophets, even when I hear another prophecy, I get another vision. Like they see one thing and I see the rest of it. You know, it is so, so cool. But that is how the spirit of, pop, of prophecy operates. And another thing about the spirit of prophecy is receiving impartations. What is an impartation? An impartation is a transference it's like a transfer of graces of the spiritual gift. So for example, I have received many spiritual impartations of the gift of prophecy um, through other prophets. They will literally place their hands over you and they say, I bless you with visions and I lose words of knowledge and dreams and all these things. And um, But you know what? It is biblical too. We see that in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 11 where Paul wants to share some spiritual gifts for the strengthening of the church of Rome and so that would that's one incident and then we see also the example of Moses and Elijah where they also wanted to transfer the 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 mantle the grace the gifts whatever they carried um, a really awesome saint that I didn't know also did this was Saint Vincent Ferrer and he was a really great preacher, but he he followed up with his preaching of repentance with supernatural demonstrations. But he would get really tired of doing all this work. And so what he said is like, you do it yourselves. And I'm, I'm in that camp. I really believe that too. You know, it's like, teach a man, train you how to fish so that you can go out there and, but you know, it's, it's about building by multiplication, especially being in the new covenant in the new Testament. We are meant to all hear the voice of God. I, I strongly believe that. And so sometimes you, you just need a little like activation from someone. One thing, whenever I minister to people, whenever I come across somebody who's just kind of like, mm, you're a little crazy lady, you know, you, you, you're, you're talking all this mumbo jumbo. Um, what I like to do is, you know what? let me let me do an impartation right now and i like to pray that god will give them a vision and this has been so so effective and awesome because then they receive a vision and it's not me you know it's coming directly to them and so you know when you experience that kind of doubt 
that is one way to help them to see that God does want to speak to them. And then praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is one of like the lowest level of gifts, but praying in tongues is the way that we activate a spiritual atmosphere. It's like charging. It's like electricity. The Bible says that praying in the spirit, you're, you're actually declaring the mysteries, the prophecies of God, the mysteries, the utterances of God, or the spirit intercedes on our behalf and groanings unexplainable. And so the spirit is actually praying on our behalf in God's perfect will. And I'll have to do a whole separate video of what, how, how that is and what the Bible says about that. But, um, but that's, that's one way to electrically charge an atmosphere. And when that happens, like for example, I like to pray in the spirit when I'm walking around my neighborhood. Oh my gosh, like you can be, you can declare a spiritual atmosphere in your home that's how powerful it is it's awesome and then i will say this one thing i will say this one thing about prophecy if you maybe you're watching this and you've already received a prophetic word a prophetic word over your life and here's the thing that you actually have to receive it you have to accept it and how do you accept it it's through faith you say okay i believe i accept that word for my life i declare that word for my life as well i partner with that word for my life because there's so many times that a prophetic word is given to people and they're kind of like well whatever you know um maybe but no like you actually have to have faith to exercise that sometimes when we do healing and deliverance sessions over people you'll notice that you get you you receive some healing and then like three days later it comes back why does that happen well sometimes it's simply a matter that we stopped believing and so that happened to me i received um i received healing over an arrhythmia that was happening in my heart and then like i don't know like three weeks later it i started to feel it coming back and i realized you know what i'm just gonna believe right now and i said i believe i was healed and you know what it went away again so praise god for those things but again i'm telling you it takes it takes a lot of faith it takes faith okay number seven so up until this point maybe you're not feeling too connected and maybe um, you just want to be practical so you know maybe you know exactly the kind of breakthrough or healing that you're looking for but maybe you're just not praying in God's will and God's alignment with his will and so what one of the things that here this activation is is great like what does the Bible say about your situation? What does the Bible say? Maybe you're maybe you're at a crossroads in your marriage and you don't you don't know whether, you know, God is actually telling you to get divorced or not. You know, what does the Bible say about divorce? It says God hates divorce, you know, blah 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 blah. And you know, maybe a separation is is the right thing. I don't know. But like what is God's word speaking about your current situation? Because maybe you're praying for something and that's actually not even like biblical that's not a truth that's not even an option that's not on the table you know and so when you start praying out of alignment of God's will then that becomes that that becomes your Ishmael you know you go into an Ishmael season maybe God will bless you you know because God blessed Ishmael but you're not going to receive the fullness of what God's plan is for your life and you're gonna miss it another thing is like do you have a spiritual director a spiritual director can help you get into practical wisdom the Bible says in the book of James that if if you lack wisdom ask the Lord for wisdom and he will give it to you generously so pray for that word of wisdom over your life okay so number eight activation here's kind of a cool one and I did this one over my over my name so what's in a name what what does my name actually say about me well if you've gotten to this point in the video you realize that declarations are really important they can dictate whether something prospers or something completely fails and so if you look at your name what does your name actually mean that your parents gave you your name carries a meaning and if you like kind of dig into that you'll notice some themes in your life. For example, my name is Paola, and what it means is little one or humble one. And if you know me, and if you 
even just like research my Facebook posts from like 10 years ago, you'll notice that I had incredible pride. I mean, I'm still very, that is a character defect that I work on actively. And so my name actually is a declaration for humility. It, it, it's, it's healing to me. When people say my name, I receive, I think about humility. And then my last name, Rivers, Rios is my maiden name, Rios, and it means rivers. And then when I married my husband, his last name is Paz, peace, it means peace. And so humility, rivers of peace. <laughs> rivers of peace is the name of this channel. Flumina Pachis in Latin means uh, rivers of peace. And I declare that over this channel, you know, and, and God's peace is so much different. When I married my husband, you know, we didn't have peace to be honest, you know, for like the first year was very difficult. And even later on, we had a very difficult marriage, but you know what? God came through and he did declare rivers of peace in my home. And to God be the glory for that. The Lord taught me what the peace in the middle of the storm was. The Lord taught me those things. That is a thread of my life. And so I, I love to share that with people because God wants to say something through your name. And maybe you've had a very difficult life and your name is awful. Maybe, you know, I was sitting at the doctor's office one time and they called out a girl, her name was Jezebel. I was like, dear Lord Jesus, oh my gosh, does she know who Jezebel is? And I almost started like, I wanted to minister to her. But you know, you can change your name. You can actually, if, if the name means something evil, then you can um, turn it around. You know, you maybe the call on your life is to attack the spirit of Jezebel. Maybe that's what God called you to be. You gotta look for the thread of God's work in your life. So maybe that's something you wanna look for. That's a prophetic activation that I like to encourage people to do. Okay, and so number nine, activation number nine is God's word, duh. That is revelation. Every single sentence in the Bible is a prophecy that can be spoken over your life. One of the activations that I like to do with God's word is just look for something you relate to in the Bible. You don't have to be a theologian. I'm not a, I love the Bible. I'm not a theologian, but I know how to apply the Bible to my life. And so one of the things that I like to do is in the book of Psalms, which Psalm speaks to you? And I like to dissect it, I like to obsess over it, and I like to prophesy a psalm over my life. That's that's a that's a really good one because the Psalms are book is a book of healing. It's a book of song, you know, and singing is healing um, to your soul, and it teaches you how it instructs you and it teaches your soul how to how to live. The only thing I'm going to say about God's word is that you can't just read it. The Bible is the only book in the world that has to be read with someone, and that's the Holy Spirit. So if you're reading the Bible to just kind of like study it, like you can't really... I've done that. You know, I have studied the Bible and I was like a Pharisee. I told you I had the character defect of pride, right? So um, I can be like a crazy Pharisee when it comes to... You know, the, the devil knows the Bible. The devil can quote scripture. But the thing about scripture is that when the Lord gives you revelation through scripture, that is what helps. God's word should not be read without the presence of the Holy Spirit. The devil likes to quote the Bible. And so the, de the devil will use the Bible as your enemy, as the sword against you. And he does just ask any exorcist. Uh, deliverance sessions are very legalistic. It's very interesting um, how how that works, but we have to know the Word of God, but we have to come to it in the spirit of revelation. And so all you have to do is ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, will you meet with me here? Will you meet with me? Will you provide a word of revelation for my life? And the Lord will speak. The Lord will speak. Well, you guys, there you go. Nine ways to prophesy into your new year. I would love to hear what the word that you picked was. And I also wanna do an impartation here really quick. 
I want to release an impartation over you and I want people to build the church. That's the season we're coming into. The spirit of prophecy will help build the church. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I thank you. I thank you for every spiritual gift that you have bestowed upon my life, Father. And right now, I want to release an impartation, Father. I lose dreams visions, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, Father, over your children, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that they may build the kingdom of God, Father, pour out a fresh spirit of revelation over their lives, Father, for for they seek you, Lord, and they want a word, Father. So right now, Father, I thank you, Lord, because I know you're doing it. In Jesus' name, I pray this video blessed you. Help me out by giving me a like. It really does help the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe because I'm going to come out with some more training videos. And again, I hope this blessed you and thank you.